Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another album review slash reaction. And uh, this is going to be something that's a little different for us because we may not be listening to this entire project based on what we've seen and what we sort of have a kind of a bit of understanding of what this is. So as you've seen, I'm sure from the title of the video, we are going to be listening to the brand new Bad Omens um, sort of album set of three EPs release. I'm not sure exactly what to refer to this as, they are calling it the Concrete Jungle, the OST, um, which is cool. I don't know exactly what they mean with that. And I tried looking up a few different sort of like articles yesterday just to see what it said. And basically they were just sort of announcement articles from like Metal Sucks and a couple of other websites, uh, Blabbermouth, I think, and a couple of other ones, just basically saying Bad Omens announced the Concrete Jungle OST, which is gonna feature three parts and here's what they are, and here's what it is, and when this is when it'll be coming out. So um, there's 26 songs total, and I believe the last section, sort of like the last third of these 26 songs, are live recordings. And so it's Chris's and my plan to basically skip those uh, and see. If we're having a lot of fun listening to this and we're curious, we maybe will pick one of those songs and just see how they perform the songs live. But for now, it is not our intention to listen to any of the live stuff. Uh, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll know that we don't generally do a lot of live things here. We generally talk more about music production things and just how we feel about studio albums in general rather than performance you know we try to come at things from a little bit more of a technical standpoint but also our opinions and not necessarily so much from technical uh standpoint in terms of music performance so hopefully that makes sense um if you're new here what we're going to do is basically we'll we'll let you know which song we're on we'll go sequentially through the album and we'll just like listen to the song talk over it a little bit and then we'll pause afterwards and we'll discuss our thoughts a little bit more in depth and then we'll move on to the next song and i will count down before each song so chris and i can sync up on our respective ends and so you watching if i have to in, if i have to upload this video without the audio from the album in the video so that you can sync your, your own copy of the songs up with us i know it's annoying and i know it's a bummer and i'm hoping because bad omens is a younger band they're on sumerian record label um i'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of reactions out there to bad omens uh, out on the internet so i think that their music is set to such that we i i we i will we will get a copyright claim on the video but it won't necessarily be blocked in in any countries maybe russia and belarus which is what two of the countries that are like blocked most of the stuff i upload that has music mm. in it which is 99 percent of everything we upload on this channel is blocked in russia and belarus <laughs> which is interesting <laughs> right but, and soviets did it again yes and, and, and so but but hopefully i'm hope at the end of the day, I'm hoping that what you'll be able to hear exactly what we're hearing while we're listening. But if not, I will do countdowns and you'll be able to sync up with us. And I will include description uh, or uh, links in or no. I will, I will also include links in the description to listen along to the album and everything. If you don't have a copy of it with, your, with you, which I don't even know if they sell this in physical copy, but I'll include links. And then if you look on the timeline of, line of the video, I will also include timestamps as well so that you can skip around the video to whatever parts you want. And then at the end, we'll sort of give our overall thoughts, though I'm not sure we need to necessarily think of this like a review. It's going to be more sort of like seeing what's going on. Yeah, so, in comparison. Yeah, I suppose. So, Chris, let everybody know what our kind of general thoughts were about their album that came out. I think at this point, two years ago, the death of. Peace I think of you're Earth. right. It's funny because we did our top twelve mm -hmm. for that year, and I don't think either of us had that album as number one. I know I didn't, mm -hmm. but we both had it on there, and it was kind of a surprise where we were both like, "It's the Bad Omens album, isn't it?" And then we talked about it more, and then we sort of came to the conclusion that it was actually the best album of the year. <laughs> yeah. I think it was your number two and it was my number three. Yeah, either two or three for yeah. me. And we were both really like, the more we talked about it, the more I was like, I could easily make a, a case for this album being the number two or number one album of the year for me. Yeah. Um, and we really liked it a lot. And I went back and re I was took some time off from it just unintentionally and mm -hmm. I went back and listened to it again the other day. Not really the other day, I suppose, but like a couple of times over the last few weeks. And it is just insane. It 
it's such a good album. Mm-hmm. It is the dynamics and like the music, like the song types, like every song does something different within itself. There's no one genre involved. They're just really so well written. Mm-hmm. Incredible album, honestly. Yeah. yeah. At the time we were saying we were both very impressed with how they managed to make the heavy metal parts of the song still feel very heavy and intense and bigger even though the electronic parts of the songs still felt as massive as they possibly could have felt. Mm-hmm. And I remember that being a very impressive thing to to me the first time I heard it. Because I will say in general, this is not necessarily... I was surprised how much I liked this album. Um, I knew who the band was, but I didn't ever delve into either of their first two albums at all. Yeah. And so this was their first album where I, that I really gave it a shot. And I remember listening to it the first time, and I was just like, wow, this is actually a really great song. And the second song, wow, this is a really catchy song. And the third song, and it just happened the whole way through the whole album. And it's a big, chunky, meaty, full album full of... there. There's multiple songs that have no guitars whatsoever, um, there's certain songs that have no electronics and it's, they're just heavy. There's more like rock stuff. And Some songs have no clean vocals. Exactly. Yes. And so I, I really, there were so many things that really impressed me about, uh, that album. And so this, from what I was reading, this, the Concrete Jungle OST is apparently what they're calling an, a companion album to that album. So I don't think this is, they don't consider this a new album or anything like that, though I do think we're going to get, I think, nine songs that are brand new songs. Oh. Um, and I think then we're going to get some remixes or reworkings of a couple of cool. the songs. And um, we'll just have to see what they are. I have not heard any of this at all. Same. I have not no. listened to any samples or anything at all because I wanted to be totally fresh for this because I thought maybe there was a chance that we would do this. Mm-hmm. And I'm really glad that we decided to do it. So, I am ready to jump into it. Are you ready, Chris? I am. Okay, I have, I have not one, heard a single ounce of this. I have one thing I want us to do first real quick. So oh. just go ahead and look right down here, and I'll be right back with you in just one second. Okay, so for this video, I did not plan this, but I have blue shirt, Black Panther, blue, blue cream soda, Frosty, uh, hmm. This is just a blue cream soda in a glass bottle. Is it going to be like a raspberry blue? No, <clears throat> it's just I, I've already had one of these to be fit, to be honest. So mm-hmm. this isn't like a reaction to the beverage, but it's just um, really good cream soda that they made blue for whatever reason. Um, but they have like a red one, they have an orange one, and they do have other flavors. So they do have like an orange sort of cream soda. They have like a couple different root beers. I think they have like an orange root beer as well. And this hmm. is just. I actually bought this at Menards, um, <laughs> which if, if people are unfamiliar or depending on where you're watching this from, oh, look at that. It's very, very rare that I drink something out of a glass bottle. Is that a problem for you? Mm. Makes me feel badass. It should. Glass bottles are the best. Yeah, it really is. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, Menards. Um, Menards is a... Uh, it's. It's mainly like a store in the Midwest, but it's a very big chain. Yeah, and it's a regional Home Depot, basically. Yes, it's like a Home Depot or a Lowe's, very similar mm-hmm. to those two things. Uh, but they're a lot more prev- prevalent, uh, especially in Nebraska, where uh, where I live, in in the towns that aren't necessarily the two big, huge cities, like the mm-hmm. the population of a million. You know, in Omaha, which has a population of around a million people, there are no Menards. But in all mm-hmm. the little twenty thousand people cities and you know 10 15,000 people cities there's a menards in every one of those mm-hmm. so um they have a lot of really interesting food products drink products all sorts of cool things they run all sorts of neat sales and one of the things that they are very famous for is having all these old timey candies and old timey huh. like chocolates and um different flavors of like tons and tons of like sunflower seed flavors and all sorts of things like that and they're all off brand things or like local sort of midwest brands that sell through there yeah it's it's really cool you can buy a lot of really cool stuff i lived there 25 years i had no idea yeah yeah well most people don't think of menards you you go there to buy your lumber and for building your deck you know or to buy a new oven or something 
uh, you don't necessarily go there to buy food, but they do have a lot of really great and very unique food products, and they have these Frosty brands, and so it's like it's like four dollars and fifty cents for a pack of four of these, which is really good. That's so. great. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing about Menards is that my a friend of mine years ago, he combined how um, he combined Lowe's, Home Depot, and Menards into one word, mm. and he called it Howards. And he would just use that as like a, a catch-all. It's like I'm going to go to Howard's, and it meant he was going to go to any one of those three places. <laughs> yeah. Well, and sometimes, honestly, if, depending on what you're looking for, you got to go to all three of them to find the exact right. thing. Right. Which is something I still use, even though nobody here knows what Menards is. And it's I'm going to go to right. Howard's. Well, yeah. I'm going to head over to Howard's and get some whatever. <laughs> <laughs> going to get some lumber. Yep. See if they got another. I got to get another 12 millimeter. Two by four. <laughs> <laughs> You're just <laughs> hammer, he says. <laughs> hammer, two by four, <laughs> nail. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and listen to this. Um, I, like I said, I don't know what we're gonna, what we are going to get here. I am going to just load all 26 songs into my Winamp. Mm. Don't don't blow my eardrums out, please. So I'm assuming that this first track, I see it's 57 seconds long. Let's just listen to the first track and go into track two. With, I do you, think I maybe have heard this band song track two, but I don't. We'll see. Yeah, this is the this is their big song that they've been pushing for a while. And this, as far as I remember, is the one that features Poppy mm-hmm. Van. It's V-A-N. Mm-hmm. So apparently the term Van stands for something. I don't know right. what. I probably I, don't I, want I, to know. It is an initialism. Yeah, I, I don't want to know, probably. Actually, it might be an acronym because it's also still a word. Mm. Ah, we drive a van. <laughs> <laughs> Two by four. Edit that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we drive a van. We drive a van. <laughs> Mr. Black. <laughs> Mr. Black. <laughs> yes. I love that you made that reference. I know. Well, you've got me. You've got me understand. I've told you the wrestling Simpsons crossover is is very strong, and I'm starting to understand yes. some Simpsons things from watching all the Bacho Mania videos. That's fantastic. Okay, so track one, C Project slash C J O S T slash Beat Death, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. You ready? Yep. In three, two, one. I'm really curious about the the production quality of this. Is it going to be less than because they didn't their last album? They put a lot of effort into during the pandemic and they did it all themselves, I believe. So I'm curious how these new songs are going to sound. If they did it all themselves, I'm going to say that these will sound just as good. They should. I there's would no so. way. Like there's not going to ha- it's not going to be able to be ruined by another person. Like, if they put that much work into their previous album themselves, that they did it because they want it to sound. I, I would think that, but I've heard Led Zeppelin 4. So <laughs> I have no faith in a band ever recording themselves, no matter how big or popular they are. I love it. Never stop hating that album. <laughs> oh, I won't. Okay, here we go. There it is, Violence Against Nature. Yep. Oh, V-A-N. I hate nature so bad. I want all the violence towards it. This is good stuff. It sounds more rock and less electronic. Even these this yes. elements, these elements, which are fine. The drums are more contained in the middle. Oh. Dude, Poppy can do no wrong. Correct. Except for when she does wrong, like her last album that wasn't very good in my opinion. <laughs> that dude, that album's so good. That album's I, so good. You, I know you keep listening to it and telling me that. It's better than we thought it was. Mmm. Ooh, that's cool. That's good. That's cool. That's real good. Of 
Chris Schoenberg would hate this. Good. She's going very tattoo in this. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yes. That's a good call. I'm surprised he hasn't sung at all. Yeah, I think this is just her. Wouldn't that be cool if every song would just featured a different vocalist? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we heard that. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Uh. Oh. God. <laughs> We're getting to some spirit box here. Man, oh man. Now there is bad omens. This is such a perfect combination. <laughs> yeah. God. And I love the fact that it's 4.30, the, the length. It's not some mm -hmm. two minutes and 57 second long song. Yeah. Oh, man. Good luck topping this. Oh, that's cool, that sweeping synth part. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I love the wiping off of the one that's there to put another one back on. Oh, you got to you got to you they need to feel the sting of defeat. You got to get fresh. a fresh line. They need the fresh sting of defeat. I have heard Okay. two new poppy singles. Okay. And this explains them. Uh oh. Okay. It is, it is the heaviest that she's ever been. Mm. Both of them are. Okay. However, this <laughs> I'm talking about something that is not relevant to this, but I did find them to be a little bit lacking in poppy personality. Mm. They sound almost derivative as a result of that. But anyway, this is fantastic. <laughs> See, I thought I I agree. I do think that there was everything in this was really cool. It mm -hmm. did almost feel like they were like. Poppy, record us some vocals and just send it to us and we'll build a song around it rather than setting the vocals to like the, the crafted music already. You know what I mean? It almost felt like a remix of a song. All right. Yeah, I can dig that. Like it, it just kind of felt like sort of three different parts. And then what they did to extend the song a little bit more was like, OK, let's take this part that we had over here and we'll just copy and paste it over here. But we'll take the drums out. Mm -hmm. And then, and now that's how songs are made, <laughs> you know, just in right. general. But it, uh, to me, I did get a bit of a feel of that, like, if you're good, like if someone just sent you tracks and they're like, make a remix out of this and you crafted something around the vocals rather than it being the other way where the both things were kind of written in harmony together. So I do feel that it was a little bit disparate feeling, but just a tiny bit. And I do feel like there were enough parts of that song. I don't really know what the chorus of it was. I guess that opening part where she was doing the violence against nature part. Um, 
But then I feel like every time she repeated that vocal line, there it was over different music, which I think is maybe one of the reasons that I feel that way about it. Oh, sure. Like they just kind of were like it's it seemed like it was kind of generic vocal lines that didn't yeah. didn't have a lot of singing to them. It was just violence against nature. Like it's very simple, right? And then they mm-hmm. the music is basically there. There was really pretty pretty much only one guitar note played that whole time, and it was just. Pfft. You know, it's just, you know, and then it's just like right, patterns of the lowest note you can play on the guitar, however they had it tuned. And that's fine. That's how a lot of music is made nowadays. And that is one of the things that Bad Omens has done. However, I will say I do think that on the death of peace of mind one of the things that really did impress me was the sort of musicality aspect of everything that they were doing and none of it felt lazy to me and i don't want to say that this song felt lazy but i do feel like it was missing something that was special and was there in every one of the songs on their on their their album but again yeah this is yeah kind of like an ep thing so it's like maybe we're comparing apples to oranges a little bit you know who knows Mm -hmm. and and i just does sorry go ahead I would say maybe at the very least you could say it feels a little less inspired. Maybe that's a good way to say it, yeah. Yeah. Just in the sense that, like, it is relatively repetitious, I kind of, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Especially in the vocal. I do, I, I think that I could definitely agree with the idea that they had this collaboration set up and they, you know, gave her some sort of musical direction almost like a storyboard kind of thing yeah it's like here's the here's your basic structure for how this is going to be composed and from like you know chords and stuff perspective she gave a vocal that fit it and then they threw it onto this and then did a bunch of stuff to it yeah she wasn't actually part of the process which i mean it's cool i got nothing wrong with that and and a lot of but it does i get that feeling it makes sense to me yeah and a lot of music is made that way nowadays i -hmm. will say it's very cool that and one of the things that impressed us both, and I think we already said this, with Death of Peace of Mind was the fact that they didn't feel pressured to make the songs metal songs. Like, they they, mm-hmm. they felt fully comfortable to have three quarters of a song be just a straight-up electronic song and then have the last fourth of the song be the metal part. So that tells me that right there that they're approaching it from the mindset of someone who's like we are not going to be tied down by like constraints of what what we're doing here and that shows here even more because that was a bad omen song that did not feature the bad omens singer at all right you know what i mean so yeah like they've almost got their like bad omens the production house yeah like Roy Sop yeah or you know any of those electronic artists who's who have no permanent vocal Mm -hmm. and they you know they are producers like Daft Punk for example who does stuff like that yeah and maybe that's another reason it felt like a remix to me almost because it's like that makes sense you know we'll see and I will say all of this being said however negative any of it might sound I can think of nothing better in the whole world than an entire album of Bad Omens with Poppy (laughs) I know right (laughs) I I would like it hit so well it was so it hit so good and it just sounded Oh, it's exactly what I want. I would have liked to hear them sing together, but sure. you know, it's still cool the way that it was. And I mm-hmm. that part in the middle where it was like her screaming and it was just vocal like they were doing the distortion and jittering yeah, like, and like all, oh. oh, and I should say too, I loved the intro track too, where it was just sort of like vocal takes, mm. just like manipulated and stutter edited and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. then that's what they did, that sort of same style f- with Poppy's like screaming vocals during that like big breakdowny part of the song. So um, I really appreciated that. And r- as soon as the song started and I heard that metal part, I was like, okay, this sounds a little bit more traditional metal than the mm-hmm. stuff on Death of Peace of Mind, which did feel very produced. And I don't say that in a bad way at all. This just felt a little bit more like a band. You know, the, yeah. the symbols and everything felt a little bit more real. And I'm sure it was made the same way that the other stuff was, but I felt it was contained a little bit more rather than being so enormous. Uh, but I also think that that was not necessarily to the detriment of the song. I do think it still sounded phenomenal. So, mm-hmm. um, all right. So now I don't know what to expect for the rest of these. And unfortunately, the copy of this that we're looking at is not telling me uh, who's featured on any of the other songs or anything. So I don't. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you see any metadata on yeah. any of these? Yeah. It's showing up in Fubar. 
Oh, okay. I'm, I see. I'm using Winamp, not Fubar. So, uh, so what do you see for the next song? Does it feature somebody? Yeah, this is Bad Omens, Health, and Swarm. Oh. Health, I don't know. Swarm, I do know. Okay. D- and that's going to be interesting. I don't know Swarm super well, so I can't look at that name and be like, oh, here's what I can expect out of this. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was another song that did not have any Bad Omens vocals. I really hope if that if this is what this is, I want there to be at least one, if not two, or all the rest of the songs to just be like sweet, badass rap verses. <laughs> I want that so bad. I just I was listening to music in the car earlier today when we were coming home from the hospital and uh, we, uh, I was listening to a soundtrack. See, we've been listening to soundtracks a lot recently because um, it's a fun thing for my mom and I to just throw a soundtrack in. And then maybe if one of us doesn't like one of the songs, we might like the next one. You know, that's the great thing about compilations. Mm-hmm. And so we were listening to a soundtrack. And um, we were actually listening to the soundtrack to Titan AE, by the way, which does have an exclusive Power Man 5000 song on there called uh, This Is The End or uh, The End Of Everything. I think it's called The End Of Everything. Mm-hmm. Um but anyway, after that was done, I ejected the CD, and on the radio, a new song was playing, and it was a Five Finger Death Punch song featuring DMX. I bet you loved that. It was really nice. I did really like it. <laughs> it was like not. It was like one of the least heavy Five Finger Death Punch songs. And for the record, for people watching, I'm not a big Five Finger Death Punch fan. I do like their earlier stuff, and their first album has some of like the coolest, most kick-ass riffs ever on it, and then they definitely changed. And I have always loved Ivan Moody's vocals, and I liked his previous band called... Um... Oh my God, I was just thinking of it earlier today because nobody knows that band. Moto Grader. Um, Moto Grader. Oh, that sounds familiar, actually. Yeah, they well, they they kind of dressed up in all paint and stuff, and they were definitely at the same time as like Slipknot and Mudvayne were getting popular. Um, and they had a, a, a two, two big songs. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, they uh, It was an interesting thing. I've always wanted DMX to sing on like a rap rap metal song because his voice is so raspy. I feel like it would really work well. And unfortunately, I thought it was Exhibit the whole time because he sounded more like Exhibit than DMX. So I don't know, whatever. But whatever. Really I'm funny. hoping we get some some hip hop vocals on this, I guess, is one of the, the reasons I bring that up. OK, so this next one is The Drain. Are you ready? I am. OK, in three, two, one. I don't know if I can take this. Are we listening to the best album of the year, Chris? And <laughs> I can't wait for that to be the case. And it's not even a real album. It already sounds incredible. It does. And the like, oh, it's got so much space. Ooh. Oh, that kick drum. Yep. You can tell they're just having fun. Oh, man. It just got that, better. That bass. Mm-hmm. And it fits with that kick so well. This is going to be nuts, man. Interesting to have the tom drums with the driving kick drum like that. There is just... A master class in electronics. Yes. I feel like his vocals are a little low here. Like, I'm trying to reach in and pull them out a little. But I don't think it's too low. Yeah, they're not lost, but no. they are a little low. I hope Clayton hears this stuff and is like, I got to kick my ass in gear here. You know? Oh, listen to that. <laughs> Yeah. 
Man. What are they doing? <laughs> Why? I don't even know. It's like they just can't stop having awesome ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to say it. Yes. It's a cool beat, too. Like, I mean, it just it sounds badass immediately. Mm-hmm. Just don't fade out. What if they do it for every song? Darkest timeline. Ugh. Those drums. Ah, I love that they added one more. God. How do they do it? <laughs> I know, right? It's it's just like the moment the song starts, awesome. Never yep. gets any less awesome. It just it doesn't. It just it's, stays at it, the height of what it is the entire time. There's something about their music that just has like this this tube of low end where it's like as soon as the song starts, you've just got this driving like like a river of lava that just carries everything forward and it never stops, but it never you never lose anything in it. Yeah, I was gonna say, but that to me the most impressive thing is that it, the drums, even though that is true and the low frequencies are there like in abundance, mm -hmm. the drums never fail to feel massive. Like you right. you don't lose the punch of the kick. You don't mm -hmm. you don't lose that. It's still there. You feel it every hit. And that's one of the things that's impressive to me. And, and I, that was one of the things that impressed me a lot, too, with their their death of peace of mind, which now that we're a couple, two songs into this, I think we're getting a little bit more of an idea of what this is. Definitely less or at least I I mean, I guess the first song was a little bit more metal, but I still think that that one was pretty electronic throughout. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would not be shocked if we didn't really get too much metal sounding stuff on this, uh, at least of these first nine songs. But maybe one of them is just a straight up balls to the wall metal song. Who knows? You know, they've done it. Uh, yeah. And so so like, I don't know, but I just I'm really impressed with the production. I think it's it's really, really nice. Everything. Yeah. All the frequencies are being handled very well. Yes. I, this this sounds like sort of like flagship work, like. Good luck making this kind of music sound better than this does. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, I don't know if you heard me or not, but I said, I hope that Clayton hears this and it, yes, it gets, him to, gets, gets him to kick, kick him in the butt a little. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like a lot of the times, that's the other thing that like impresses me about this so much. Like, I just feel like there are so many artists that would be afraid to like, it's like, it's like their Bad Omens is not afraid to take that step beyond like, okay, we're still a metal band, but like, we don't have to prove to anybody that we are. Mm -hmm. So like this, that song was really not a metal song. I mean, honestly, if you told me there were no guitars in that at all, I would believe you, you know, mm -hmm. during the chorus, there was some crunchy stuff happening and it got wide. But if you told me that was some sort of a bass, like some sort of a synth bass spread wide with like analog filters and things on it to try to make it sound more like a guitar and then distortion thrown over the top of it. I would absolutely believe you that believe you. Mm -hmm. And so like just the fact that they're like, we don't care, you know, we're going to, we're going to go as hard as humanly possible so far on every song I've heard them do And this includes mm -hmm. on death of peace of mind. Like every song is them going as hard as they can. And I just feel like so many artists hold back just a little bit, you know, and I just don't feel that here at all. Like, I feel like there's no holding back at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so impressive. It is. It so is. And it could even be the, like, the honestly, the difference between being very, like, being great as an artist and being exceptional. Where it's like, I agree. What the, the thing where it feels like other artists are holding back is simply that they don't have the vision or the direction or whatever is happening with the way that they're making their songs. Mm -hmm. To get to this level, because this, like, you know, there's a reason not everything sounds like this. Yeah. And whoever mastered this, which probably was them, I would guess, mm -hmm. which if that's the case, whew. yeah. if I was in another band, I would be like, can you please master my album? 
for me. Yeah, can I because please this join is like your band? <laughs> masterfully mastered. I mean, everything about it is amazing. <clears throat> And mm-hmm. so, you know, that's absolutely great. I it's absolutely, I can't, let's, I can't even wait. Let's just go to the next one. Yep. So what, what does this one say for you? Yeah, this is Terms and Conditions. It's got Bad Omens and Bob Vilan, whoever that is. Oh, Bob Vilan, Bob Vilan. Bob Vilan. Bob Vilan. Yeah. Bo- Bob, Bob Vila's home again. Bob Vila. <laughs> we both made the and same joke t- at the same time. <laughs> and it's all, I thought, it's a, I thought you made it because I made it. It's only two minutes, eight seconds. So it might be something else. Maybe this is a balls to the wall metal one, like I said. Maybe. I don't know yeah. who Bob Velan is though, or whatever. So if he can play a guitar like he can build a house, we might be in for some real work. <laughs> um, what was the thing that he always used to say? Oh, this is gonna be great. I Bob love little phrases. <sighs> he was like the spokesperson for something. And it wasn't Binford Tools. Because <laughs> Binford Tools was by far superior to whatever he was hawking. But Binford Tools aren't real though. <laughs> I know. Come on. Let me live in my world of home improvement being real. I want yes, to I want course. to live in that world. All right, whatever. Terms yep. and conditions, which is an awesome title for a song. Um let's just go ahead and get into it. Yep. In three, two, one. Let's go. This one's gonna fade out guarantee. <laughs> Ooh, the British accent. Mode step. Yep. Oh, that's badass. Oh, I oh. love it. I love this. I love it. <laughs> I'm so I'm so excited. I feel like a little kid. Sound like one. Give me the chorus one more time. Don't be scared, you wieners. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Just need to ask for more things out loud. Guitar solo? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so awesome. Not in five seconds. <laughs> no. Uh, Interesting. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. That was great. I wish it was twice as long with cor- a big chorus in the middle and a, and a bridge, but I'll take it. That was cool. That was great. I I will say, I love British accents, but I'm not necessarily yet sold on the rapping British accent. Mm. And especially that rapping British accent. I, mm-hmm. I do have a couple of... Um... There's a couple of, well, you know, it's interesting. I don't know if I have an album that's full of a, of a singer, a, like a lead singer that's, that raps that way, but like Linkin Park, they have a song on their most recent album that has a guy that has that, that particular English uh, or, or UK accent. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I like, I like it. It's weird. I know. I guess I haven't fully formulated my opinion on this, so I shouldn't just bleh, 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 out loud. But I, I guess part of me thinks does think it's really cool and the flow is really interesting. But at the same time, I also don't know if I necessarily care for it. I don't know. I guess I'm still trying to decide. Yeah. <laughs> so the end of to that. <laughs> but, but I love that. Sick beat. Really awesome. Can you hear me through the white noise, which is the one clean vocal yep. that he had in the in their other song, uh, the the artificial suicide song from uh death of peace of mind 
Yep. Um, amazing. Sampling themselves. Yep. Super cool. Great. Love it. And now it opens up this album even further to like, what in the world could we get next? Mm-hmm. You know? Because mm-hmm. the, <clears throat> the next song says Recharged. Yes. Whatever that means. Hedonist Recharged. So what do you see for the metadata on this one? Bad Omens and Wargasm. Oh, I know who they are. I thought you might. It sounded familiar, but I don't. I don't know. Yes, I believe that they are a female, uh, sort of electronic, um, heavy, sort of like maybe in this moment type of thing, um, with, with some with a lot of industrial stuff. Okay, so totally. Well, fits, that's fits with this. So excitement is building. Yeah, with yes. Every word. Now, usually, if I see something is recharged or something, that makes me think like remix. Uh-huh. But maybe the song is just called Recharged. I don't know. Maybe they have a song called Hedonist, and this is the Bad Omens version. I don't know. Well, it's interesting because you get down later into the into this track list, and you've got things like The Gray and Artificial Suicide unzipped. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I wonder if these are like fancy different words for like remixed and unplugged. I was going to say, when I hear when I see unzipped, I think mm-hmm. acoustic. Mm-hmm. I don't know why unzipped <laughs> gives me a acoustic vibe. Well, I mean, it could be based on the fact that this starts with like, you know, C slash project mm-hmm. slash C Jost or whatever. Like, you know, maybe it's talking like zip file type thing. It's more oh, allusions to, sure. you know, computery nonsense yep, and yep, things like nope, that. 100%. Guarantee. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, let's see what this is. This is a yes. slightly longer to about two and a half. Um what? Oh, Hedonist? The song, yeah. Hedonist is three, 320. Yeah, but I said three and a half. Oh, you said two and a half. Did I? Oh, sorry. I was yeah. looking at the song underneath it, and then my heart fell when I saw 153. <laughs> so, wah, wah. Okay, Hedonist recharged in three, <clears throat> two, one. Probably comes... Right off the heels of that first song yeah. in a seamless transition. Ooh. Love it. Ooh. Very, very poppy. Drum and bassy. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's such a good scream. Yeah. I see him. Whoa. Okay. Love it. Okay, spirit box. <laughs> Love that stop. It's just such a. Mm.
Yeah. Dude, that song attacked. Yeah, it did. It attacked. Wow. Okay, so I think the male vocals we were hearing there were the other guy from Wargasm. Oh, there's another, there's a dude I Wargasm? I think it's, it's a male and a female, and I think they both do vocals. If I'm remembering okay. correctly, I don't think that was the dude from uh, Bad Omens, but I could be I could be wrong. Let, let us know in the comments if you're a fan of them. Um, the, the the female vocals there, I was getting a lot of poppy from that. Yep. Um Interesting. Her her scream was a lot different than Poppy's scream, though Poppy doesn't scream really that much. When Poppy does it, it's more of like a like like a sho- like a horror scream, like a classic. It's like a shocking thing. Whereas this yeah. was much more of a controlled, like I scream in our songs all the time type of thing. Right. Two definitely very different screams. Yeah. Yeah. But you haven't heard those two Poppy scenes. Yet. Right. I haven't. I haven't. Um, I'm not sure. And I'm and I I I, I like that. I like that one. Yep. I thought that was good. There was, I will say there were a few moments where I thought I heard like, the only thing I, I guess I would criticize it of is like it, p- parts of the song and maybe they did that. Maybe they edited it like this on purpose to, to make the song feel, have a particular feeling, but it almost sounded to me like the, the wargasm people recorded their vocals in a not necessarily ideal space. And then sent them to the Bad Omens guys or guy, and he had to add all these effects to the vocals to make it sound like it fit in with it. Like, like the vocals were distorted the entire time, like, like in this moment style, like slightly almost too, too distorted, distorted. There was a little in this moment in there for sure. Yeah. And, and I think that there were moments, especially when she was screaming, where I, I really felt like I heard the room that she was standing in. Oh, interesting. Which, sure. And it was like this hollow boxy hmm. sound. And I now maybe they did that on purpose to separate the vocals because I didn't necessarily really notice that as much when she wasn't screaming. But maybe they re- it's it's a very common practice when you're doing vocals like that and you have someone that's very dynamic and she's singing like poppy and then you're screaming all of a sudden to use two microphones when you're recording vocals. And one of them is for the clean vocals and one of them is for the screaming vocals. Hmm. Oh, um, sure. yeah. if the person wants to try to do stuff in like single t- in like single takes of course you can yeah. reset or whatever but like generally if you have a screaming microphone you, the practice would maybe be to move it a little bit further back uh from the other microphone or especially have the vo- volume turned way down on it but it's not uncommon to have it moved further back so you do get more of the room in there but i felt like there were a few moments during that where i thought oh this doesn't necessarily sound like up to the par up to the quality of everything we've heard so far and that was if that is the case then i think the guy did like a masterful job of putting the specific effects on their vocals to not so that it wouldn't be noticeable Mm. does that make sense like he hit it very well i think yeah and if it was a choice to do that on purpose and add the room tone to some of her, their vocals, then I can understand why they would do that too to help separate it from the different parts of the different song, uh, of this within the song. So like, I, I mm-hmm. if that's the case, I wouldn't begrudge them that at all either. So um, yeah, that was the only thing I noticed that was not like jaw on the floor amazing the whole time. Yeah, so something that keeps coming up, coming across my mind as we go through this is like, what is this? Like it's listed as being a, a, an original soundtrack, but it's not because it's not a soundtrack to anything. To anything. I've seen other bands do that, where they have like a make like a soundtrack to a property that doesn't exist. Um, and you know, I think Clayton's done that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Proto Men did that, but that was almost entirely covers. But still, they listed it as a soundtrack mm-hmm. for a movie that wouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. And so it is just really like. What is this? Because it does, it, there is a certain shortness or otherwise just like that missing element that you mentioned in the first song does sort of continue through where it's like, it's like, you know, that <laughs> that episode of Community where they have all those flashbacks to things that we that never they, saw you never in the saw. show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it feels like that where you talk, like you mentioned, so it's like it feels like a remix album. And they're remixing songs that we never heard the original versions of. Yes. <laughs> it, honestly, like I was going to tell you, you should go to Wargasm's page and just look and see if they have that song on one of their albums. 
You know what I mean? Hmm. Like maybe yeah, yeah. maybe they have a version that they'd made that's featuring bad omens or something like that. You know what I mean? And that would maybe that's what each one of these songs is. You know, maybe on Poppy's new albums, new album or something, she has her own version of the the Poppy song, and it's Poppy featuring. You know, but Poppy would probably just have this song and release it as a joint release with her and Bad Omens. But mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I don't know. I think. The fact that they call it OST, the fact that it's three specific separate parts, it's called Concrete Jungle, the OST, which Concrete Jungle was the first track off of Did the Death of Peace of Mind. Yes. So, and and what I read on on in both of those articles, so it must have been like a press release from the band or from Sumerian Records or whatever, saying that it is a companion album to The Death of Peace of Mind. So this is just supposed to be some like I would hope ma- it would be awesome if they released like a three disc set that was like the complete definitive death of peace of mind, you know, and it's the original album plus all of this on two discs. I think that would be awesome. Uh, they don't you can't even buy death of peace of mind on CD anymore because they only had such a limited run of it the first time. But oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. You can't it, it, you can't. But as far as what I know, the- last time I looked, which was around Christmas time. You couldn't purchase a copy of it, even from Sumerian Records website. But maybe now they have new more copies. But um, yeah, I, th- I don't understand. Yeah. What am I supposed to do with something being labeled a companion piece? I know. Like, where do I put that? I know. Because in my mind, I think, oh, you're supposed to play them at the same time, and then it makes a full set of songs. But that's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, t- t- to me, it would make almost more sense if it, on Spotify it was this was just called the death of peace of mind deluxe edition. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all sure. these were songs on there, but, but at this, but I almost appreciate it more because they didn't do that. You know what I mean? Like this right. is, is its own separate thing. And like that song specifically, the orgasm one we just finished is the least bad omen sounding of the group so far. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe for all we know, they are making a movie called C- Concrete Jungle, and this is literally the songs that are in it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it could be like a Melanie Martinez thing where they have they stitch all the music videos together into a cohesive film. Yep, yep. And this is that. And what a what a movie it would be. I don't even have the slightest idea what would happen. But, it was but you, it, would think, you would think you would think if, if they were going to do that, <laughs> they would just make videos for the death of peace of mind and not new songs to go with the death of peace of mind that then have videos with them. I think this is just a collaboration album. Like what, yeah. what, what we're listening to now is just a way for them to collaborate with other artists. I was thinking that yeah. and I had this thought of like earlier. This and I, this is barely even speculative this is just a a, a fantasy consideration i had because i have no better information Mm -hmm. but like i think it's safe to say that bad omens went from a band of reasonable repute to one of the biggest bands in the world Mm -hmm. two years ago Mm -hmm. and i just feel like so many of other bands were probably like holy hell can we work with you you know love of god can you do a thing because we just mentioned like if you said you said you were in if you were in a band and you heard this you would hit up there and be like can you master my album instead mm-hmm. and it's maybe that same thought process of like oh my god can I work with you guys you have just blown my brains out of my head yeah and now I can't I have no confidence in anything especially with the, and- especially with what the way their album was we keep saying that it's more it's a more more of an electronic album than it is a metal album but I would consider them to be a metal band so like yeah. Y- and it's, they I mean, that's pl- a testament they're like the p- to going, go ahead. I was just going to say, that's a testament, like going back to our conversation we've had a thousand times about what is heavy. Right. Where it's like, you've got this heavy electronics and metal and it's like the discernible differences between them in terms of especially like the frequency ranges that they take place in and how to mix them all together. Mm-hmm. Not too much different from each other because you're trying to just fill out this huge spectrum of like, just like a sausage of sound that is huge and full mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, yeah, even though that was primarily electronic and you can still consider them a metal band and you would still have full confidence in their ability to mix both of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I I was going to say was they they are a band that's poised to do things like remixes more than any other metal band. Because as I said, they do they have multiple songs that are not metal at all. They're just electronic songs, you know, so like Mm -hmm. apparent they can do the electronic side of things just as well as the metal side of things. And, you know, one of 
I, I, I didn't, the reason I didn't fight with you or not fight with you, the way, the reason I didn't disagree with you a moment ago when you said that they're one of the biggest, bigger bands in the world is because the other day I came across a meme on Facebook or something. And it was just like a video of like going through the decades of metal, you know, and it was like Metallica and Iron Maiden and Megadeth. And then it was like Linkin Park and Korn and Slipknot. And then it was uh, my bullet for my Valentine and this and this. And then they went to sleep token and bad omens <laughs> and they were playing samples of each thing. And it was like metal, 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 sleep token and bad omens, which is you know, <laughs> not, and the, yeah. but the point of it was to kind of make fun or poke fun at like modern metal. And it's totally true. Like sleep token is a majority of that album is just, not metal at all. Well, I think you know? electronic is the evolution of metal. Like, you, how are you going to make heavy music heavier? Dubstep. Add four more guitars? Like, <laughs> you're right. No, you're going to throw in electronic elements. Yeah, for sure. And it just makes the most sense, especially when you can have, especially now, when one human being can sit down and make an entire metal album that sounds just as good, if not better sonic quality wise now then like mm -hmm. metallica's then like th what we've been listening to is better than the best sounding metallica album by miles yeah. miles it doesn't even yep. come close and this mm -hmm. is all probably i assume everything we've heard here was done by the one dude like yeah. i would be surprised if it was more than just this the vocalist who like basically does everything for bad omens you know I'm pretty mm. sure he's the guy that does all the electronic stuff and all the recording and the, probably the mixing and mastering. And he probably plays the guitar well enough to do what they're doing here. So, like, he... Why not? Mm -hmm. Is the question. that and, and bands nowadays have grown up with things... You know, it, it, it's happening... It's ha it, Well, okay, I guess it's not even happening anymore. We're there. It happened incrementally, right? Like, mm -hmm. when we were in high school, if you were a band and you had keyboards, your band was like a wussy metal band. And then... Lincoln Park became the biggest band in the world. And so it was okay to have keyboards. It was okay to have rap. It was okay to sing. And, you know, and then mm -hmm. we had Stained. And then we had new metal became a thing and then metal, yeah. and then there was a bit of a rebellion against that and all this stuff and so you're you can trace it trace heavy music through what it's going through and we're we've reached a point now where it's like th there shouldn't be any more surprises the mm -hmm. only way it could be surprising is if all of a sudden they decided to merge metal and country <laughs> like <laughs> the, no, literally nothing else would be surprising. I can't think of a single other genre of music or anything that you could put into metal that would be surprising at this point. And the, th okay. the thing that makes the most sense, obviously, like you said, is electronic music, because, you know, when Skrillex became such a big thing, I remember one of the big deal, one of the big things that happened when he was getting huge and people like to discredit him a lot. And I don't really know why, probably because he just looked like such a tool at the time. <laughs> but like, I remember seeing an interview with Tommy Lee, uh, which my feelings on Tommy Lee are very, are, are mixed, but I love the Methods of Mayhem album and I love his solo albums. Okay. And I will not listen to any Motley Crue albums because I don't want to That's... force, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Why, why maybe, would you want maybe to do if that? he had to and people really wanted it but but don't give him any idea but um he was giving an interview and he was saying that he played at this festival right where where motley Crue or tommy lee or someone was playing at this festival and he heard skrillex playing and he had to go out and see what it was and he was shocked that their kids were like mosh pitting to electronic music and he said he never thought that that could happen that there could be another genre of music that like elicited or brought out those emotions in people and that heaviness yeah and when that happened a lot of people poo pooed dubstep so much because hollywood was just grabbed it and was like every movie trailer ever in the whole world has to have dubstep in it now but the, the thing is like really cool dubstep music is like some of the coolest heaviest most intense stuff that you can find and incorporating that style with metal, which is what we're hearing here, because we're not hearing necessarily metal drum beats. We're hearing electronic drum beats throughout, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whether there's sort of more hip hop influenced or the floor to the floor stuff that we were hearing in that song, too. Um, and dubstep is very famous for having things build, build, build and then have a half tempo, right? Like just very slow yeah, drums, drop. right? And that's what metal's done forever. That is literally what a breakdown is in metal. Mm -hmm. And so it, 
you're absolutely right. It just totally makes sense to have electronic music and and mix it the way they're doing here. The thing that's just so mind boggling to me is that this all kind of is being packaged and presented to us and feels like something that's like not even like an album and just sort of almost like a side thought. And it still sounds like better than anything Clayton's ever released, better than any metal any metallic album I've ever heard, better than any of that stuff. I mean, honestly, better than most things that you can currently listen. Yeah, to. and and I'm not, and it's not necessarily a super fair comparison because it is very, it is much harder to have a band go in the studio and record them and have that sound really good than to do everything yourself electronically but like we're we're to the point now where it doesn't really matter you know like if you why would you i so i guess the idea of like having pride and there's something to like doing it doing it in or, a more organic way and, and the joy you get from that but like why wouldn't you want your album to sound as good as humanly possible and you can't get it to sound any better than this you mm-hmm. know so it's like ugh, just makes sense yeah. yeah, I don't know. Sorry, we just and it makes me wonder. Like, I haven't gone back really through their earlier stuff, but it makes me wonder if they're sort of following in like in I, in in this moment kind of trajectory where like they were much more of a regular band before. I think they and were. They're I... moving more and more into electronics, and we might you know they may have completely separated themselves from traditional metal by the time we get another album or yeah. two out of them. Yeah, like Linkin Park. You know, yeah. and and you know that's I was going to mention this at the beginning of the video, and I was like, yeah, but I did when I was in the hospital earlier this year, uh, for for that long period of time when I was in the hospital, I mm-hmm. I was um, going through albums that I, because because at the end of every year, for people who are unfamiliar, we do our top twelve albums of the year list every year, and so for me, the last quarter of every year basically is just like only listen to music that came out that year, like nothing else exists for me. Yeah. And so then when I get to January, I always feel this like sense of relief, like, okay, now's the time to listen to whatever I want. And so I usually use that time to in the first couple months of the year to to go back and listen to things that I discovered, look at, you know, previous albums and bands catalogs. And I tried to go back and listen to the first two Bad Omens albums, and I just couldn't make it more than a couple songs into them. It just wasn't catching my attention at all. It sounded a lot more generic. Um, sure. There was still, it did still sound good, and there was still a lot of electronics in it, but it wasn't this at all. It wasn't the death of peace of mind at all. It was right. much more stereotypical band, and uh, it just wasn't speaking to me. Now, maybe I wasn't in the right frame of mind or whatever. There was a lot of stuff going on at the time. Um, so I should probably give those things a different shot. And we have had people recommend on the channel that we need to listen to some of their older stuff too, but I don't know. Yeah, I. How is your top twelve doing this year so far? By oh, the way, oh, I think it's going to be a great year. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be great. I mean, we have one of the a fantastic Black Keys album that's definitely going to be there. Um, the first album I listened to that came out at the very beginning of January that I did listen to in the hospital, the new Emma Bulls album, that's been my number one since I heard it. I think it's phenomenal. Wow. Um, but we've also got uh, the new Joy Wave album just came out. It sounds fantastic, but it's short. Uh, so, but that'll probably still be in the top 12. I haven't heard the Big Big Train yet, but I imagine that could be my even number one. Um, if wow. if we do get a new Spirit Box album, which we're supposed to, that I expect to be fire from front to back. Um, we could get a new, you know, there's a lot of things we could be getting. So I'm okay. very excited. I think the rest of the year looks really good. But in terms of the first six months, I think we've had some some really good albums i just i'm hoping the rest of the year does something different than the first half because yeah. we're halfway through the year and i think i might have two albums in the list. Mm, that's a bummer nothing is coming across my desk see we just last week the new eels album came out yeah and uh i normally they are a band that i would do a reaction to without question because i very much love the eels i have like their entire catalog it's like 20 albums at this point and um, but I reacted to their last album from two years ago, and it got a copyright claim, and I couldn't use the audio. So I, I was like, "Screw this! Screw that! I ain't wasting my time this year." And I listened to a few samples of the songs the other day, and that for just the, from the samples I heard, that could be like, pff, it sounds amazing. Now, every one of those songs might fade out, which would really hinder my love of that. But I think we've got a lot of good things coming out this year. We we're gonna have a new good. Browning album which is going to be their first album on on fixed record label. 
Oh wow, um, they're moving over there too. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be. They just released a single the other day for the first time, and I haven't heard it, but it's their first new music in a while. And the, I wonder if it'll sound like Clayton. Everything I don't think so. I th- I think that they that they have diversified enough now that everything on their record label doesn't sound like his music anymore. Okay. Yeah, they really ex- put a lot of effort last year into expanding. They have like they have just they basically separated all their artists into three different categories. It's like the metal category, the synthwave category, and then the general electronic category. And so like they really do have a lot of different artists. With like the washing machines and stuff, refrigerators. Yes. GE. Yes. Yeah. G- General Electric. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Grandma. Uh, <laughs> but, but Browning, one, one other very, I'm even more excited for this, is that the guy from the Browning, whose name is Browning, <laughs> um, is that his first name? Uh, his last name. I can't forget. I can't think of his first name. It's like Ted Browning or something like that. Brian Browning or something. I don't know. But but um, he he has another band that's also on fixed record label that has a female vocalist, and it's called Destiny X Destiny. Okay. They have an album coming out this year. And I also reacted to an album from a fixed record label called the uh, the band is called The Plague. I think. Surprised they get they're the first band to be able to be called that. And that they they released four songs uh, at the beginning of this year, two new ones and two older ones on an EP. And the two songs that they released that were like the two good ones are like fire. I think I showed them to you because remember they're the song they're the the guys that have the I send it to you. They sound like Weird Al, but then they have this like just intense super heavy metal like we're listening to now. Like it was very bad omens mixed with Weird Al basically. Ah. So if you did, if, if I was supposed to listen to that on my own, I must not. Yeah, that doesn't. I help specifically sent you a but... link to it. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. We don't. We can go on. Yeah, let's get moving. Yeah, through. sorry, sorry, got distracted there. We're good. Okay, this is e- even. Even, and that's all it says. Even. This might just be bad omens. It could be. All right. In three, two, one. Slow song, maybe. No, I can feel a beat. This is Plus, good. how often does their song ever just stay one? Yeah, day? that's true. I want like a sweet trip hop beat here. Mm-hmm. This could do a lot of things. It very much, very well could. Is it going to pick the one I want? All right. That reverse thing, it almost sounds like a book page is turning, you know, like just flipping through a book page at pages, mm-hmm. you know? I'll bet that's what that is. Did you do you know what I meant? I know what you meant. I don't think that I would agree that it is. Okay, but okay, I, okay. I know which, I know how you got there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other ways you could make something like that, but just what it sounded like to me. Mm-hmm. What a cool idea for a sound, you know? It'd be like an analog and- way to mimic the sound of like record static. There's so many different things happening. Yep, you got that thing you wanted. You keep saying stuff and they keep making it so. They sure do. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Make a whole album of this. Do this. This is like, I get... It started off and I was like, here's some icy stars, and then now we're into Daft Punk territory, and we got some purity ring in here. This is all over the place. Yes. The analog sounding drum loop was really cool. Mm-hmm. They're just having fun. That's what I'm saying. Nothing's off limits. This is very limits. Daft Punk right oh. now. A real bass guitar. Mm-hmm. 
with nothing it's like happening. They're flexing. Like we're gonna do. Right? We're gonna show you we can do anything, and we're gonna do it better than you can do. That's what I'm saying. It's like, what is this album besides like we just can't con- control our ideas anymore? Like we have to make something happen with everything. That's it. Boo. Sorry, the next one started really huge. <laughs> Boo hiss. Boo hiss. Yes, that should have been longer. Uh, loved it. Loved it. Yep. Once again, doesn't belong anywhere with anything. Nope. But it was great. Sounded great. I, I would have liked to have had like a, a, a more defined chorus there and have a female doing the chorus. Hmm. That would have okay. leaned into the trip hop vibes of it a little bit more. And I feel like that could have really like they could have. They could have stepped the song up one more time. Mm, I'm not saying sure. they had to add guitars and make it heavy, but just like step it up yeah, yeah. one more time. Infected mushroom style. Yeah, a little bit. One more rep, rep through. A little bit and then have have repeat a chorus, you know, make it the third time the chorus happens. Then that and that would have been a really special one. It's still special and unique amongst mm-hmm. itself, but it didn't feel necessarily like a full full fully fleshed idea to me. Agree. It felt like it cut itself just short. Yeah. Uh, okay, so loading screen. Does it? Does yours say anything? Just loading screen. It's loading screen. Okay, well, this is one fifty-three. So a pathetic amount of time. Uh, but maybe this is another rap one. Who knows? Yeah, maybe this is like a weird little intermission song. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. In three, two, one. Yeah, it feels like it technically would be part of the previous song. Yeah. <clears throat> They're trying to out pendulum pendulum. They might do it. There are some sacred things in this world you don't touch, and you do not <laughs> touch pendulum. Dude, those keyboard parts, that those brass, that's so cool. What's the the what? The brass patch. That did Oh yeah, yeah. Sounded like a sonic thing almost. This has a real 2002 kind of vibe to it. I was thinking 1996. Oh, really? Yeah. Like Prodigy? Yeah. You know? I'm getting like so yeah, so many like '90s, late '90s, like PlayStation One games. Yeah. Yes. Almost as as if it was a song on a soundtrack. Almost, yeah. And and it's called loading screen. So. <laughs> I'm not even gonna count that as a fade out since it was a waste of time anyway. Yeah. All right. Should we just go into the next one? Yeah, anything greater than human. Uh, is this one just Bad Omens as well? Bad Omens and Era, E-R-R-A. Oh, they're a metal band. Oh, okay. Let's see what they got well, for us. It's looking at, we're looking at a full-ass song, four minutes. Yay! All right, in three, two, one. Anything more than human. Urgh. You can you can just you chew it. Just <laughs> yes. You can really hear that voice on the right side. Interesting like delay and effect there. Yes. Bad omens.
I think this is the guy from Era, the band. Really? A little genty. I think that was the Bad Omens guy, and this Do you think? chorus has Era in it. The back, the screaming vocal in the back. Are they going to shred us to pieces here or go wimpy, wimpy, wimpy? I expect wimpy? a drop Or into hefty, hell. hefty. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, cool. cool. Interesting. That song to me felt a little bit phoned in. What? Yeah, it, it was cool. The, the, that the, sounded like the most full fat song on the album so I, far. I agree that it sounded fat, but the guitar was basically just going, bah, 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 bah. like there was no part to it, which is fine that we, we've heard songs like that so far on the album. But I feel like what it was, what, it, what they were doing earlier on the album with the heavier stuff was more interesting than this. I feel like this was interesting because of the introduction of the heavy vocals from the guest vocalist. Mm -hmm. And really, that's the only thing that caught my attention with this. One. I was going to say you could just slot this in somewhere on um, the album that I can't remember the name of now. Spirit Box? Oh, no. Death of Peace of Mind? Yeah, Peace of Mind. You could just pick mm. a spot, slide this in, and it fits. It's right in there. It would. I could see that. It would, not, it would bring no detriment to the album whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay. It did, it did feel like the most full song, I would say. Yeah. You know, the most complete song. I just feel right. like it, it... To me, it lacked some of the, like, uh, personality of mm. what I've been mm. feeling the other songs. Like huh. I said, it just felt a little more phoned in to me. Okay. So, uh -huh. um, let's go on to, I think this is the last one. Or no, we've got two more. Digital Footprint more, and yeah. Nervous System. Digital Footprint. What does it say for this one? Just Digital Footprint. Okay. No guests. No awesome rap oh, and, vocals. Yep. And almost five minutes. So maybe it does have all kinds of wild, wild stuff. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> I'm excited about this one. I've been excited about every one of them, though. So. Mm-hmm. By the way, I love that that was anything more than human, and they used yeah. the more than sign. That's yes, that's just cool. It just it cool. is good. All right, I was hoping that that was going to go that way. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. Digital footprint in three, two, one. <laughs> See, I feel like even making this would be difficult to get right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I definitely think so. 
the mix is just imperfect just perfect though. i couldn't do it yeah yeah but i don't make music so they're doing a lot of things that are interesting Like, there's some weird little drum thing that's happening in the far left and far right, and it's just this weird little distorted thing. But without that being there, it, the whole song would feel a lot more static. Like, like now we're getting this distant. Are we going to get a dubstep song? Mm. This is really cool, but I think I'm starting to kind of get the bigger picture that this is more just like an EP, you know, like they yeah. had like four or five, four, maybe three or four really great songs, like five sixths of the way there. And then there's just some pieces of things, you know, like obviously this is just some sort of instrumental thing that's really cool, but I don't know how much it's going to change from this. The, previ right. the previous the track was a good one. The track before that was was just a interlude. The track before that felt unfinished and and short. The track before that also felt short. That rap song felt short. You know, so it's almost like bits and pieces, like a mixtape or something almost. So I think we're getting a better idea of the pro of this this particular piece of the project as a whole, and I understand why it's not its own like separate album or something. You know. I'm a little surprised that they would make something this long that does this little. It's very unlike them. So yeah, far. yeah. Maybe this is what they play at the beginning of their show before they start, you know? Something like that. The highs are so good. Yes. Like, just a little... Handled very well. Mm-hmm. Honestly, maybe calling it a, a, a soundtrack is a way of setting expectations. That's a great point. Yeah. Because this is fantastic soundtrack material. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this could absolutely be used in a movie. Mm-hmm. Like, this could be part of the Old Boy soundtrack. Yeah, yes. I've had that old boy soundtrack sitting right here for like months, but I moved I it. Can't over wait to other, get it someday. Moved it over the other side of the room. Cool. Oof. Yeah, the next one sounds cool. I was slow I on heard, that. I heard it, and then I hit stop. Okay. So there's something happening. Um, yeah, I don't. That was um, cool. It was. It was cool. You know, like we said, both said it was a nice instrumental. Like it felt like it was could be on a movie trailer or something behind an action sequence. You know, with lots of sound effects and dudes getting beat up and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, very neat the way that it was put together. Sounds phenomenal quality wise. Oh, yeah. 
yep. you know, I'd rather have that on there than not on there. But like I said, when we were listening there, I think we're I'm we're starting to get a better picture of what this is overall, mm-hmm. at least this first part of it. And I do I'm uh, agreeing with the fact that it is more of a supplemental thing with their previous yeah. album and thinking of it as a separate project would have probably set expectations too high, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. So calling it a soundtrack or something like that is a way. Yeah, to and it wasn't even. I wasn't even saying that in reference to the idea of like set, setting expectations particularly high or low, but just more of like what you what can, to expect, what type of thing you can expect to hear on mm-hmm. this, like mm-hmm. that right there, as a soundtrack piece is no is uh, as normal as it gets. That's yeah, the yes. perfectly reasonable, the least surprising thing of all time. If this was a full album. That would be an interesting choice. Yeah. So that makes that's one of the things that makes me wonder if they picked that specifically so they could be a little bit more uh, dynamic with the types of songs they choose to make. Yeah. Just in general. Which they did have that one sort of that one electronic instrumental song on Death of Peace of Mind towards the last part of the album, I think before the Artificial Suicide song. Mm-hmm. So they did have kind of like a weird thing like that. But that song to me felt like there was a little bit more put into it than this. Like this was basically just like like a lot of electronic music like that it was the same things the, the same thing the entire time repeated like f- six times and mm-hmm. then it was just every section was different pieces taken out and put in yeah it was all it was uh, but it was still really cool sounding so let's get to the last track on this part this is nervous system so what does this one say bad omens and iris.exe okay interesting i'm assuing that might, yeah and the, the R is capital, I-R-I-S. Okay, I'm assuming that that's some kind of an, an artist or something. Yeah, I would imagine like when so. Lights works with, works with I-O, you know. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, well, let's just give this one a listen. Mm-hmm. In three, two, one. And I suspect that's Iris. Probably. <laughs> I think that's a good assumption. A little flyleaf sounding. Yes. Uh, they always push all the right buttons. That's gotta be uh, what's her face from Flyleaf. Oh, I've become the Maxell man. <laughs> oh. Now that sounds like lights. It does. Rich she even heard the new religion, like that's prodigal son. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes, what a great sound. Ugh. Yep. Now we're getting into some infected mushroom stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh. Yes. This one sounds different sonically. Yep. This was done at a different time. Oh. Man, oh man. So much super low end under that little fill there. See, I might not be getting that in my headphones. This is so good. It is really cool. Jesus.
They keep doing it. <laughs> Every time she says it and then they start this bit over, it's like, ah! Whole new fire hose, man, right in the face. Oh, that was great. That was great. That I was... want an entire album of that. Yeah, I was going to say, as soon as we were listening to that, I was like, you know, now I kind of wish they wouldn't have messed around with this and just made a new album. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Like, when, when, when's the next, day? you know, we'll probably get it next year, would be my thought. Yeah. Um, as far as I can tell, Iris saw EXE is a, is a relative nobody. She's not from the Flyleaf Chick or anything like that. It's yeah, I was trying to think of her name because she released a solo album this year and I was listening to it and I, the first like three or four songs on it were like bangers, like amazing. Oh, really? Yeah, and then after that it just kind of went and turned it out. Hmm. Um, but the first three songs on that album are great. I was trying to think of her name. I couldn't find it. She doesn't have a wiki page that I can see. Let me... Um... Her name is. Don't tell me. Don't. Oh, I got to cheat now. School. Hey Google, who's the singer for Flyleaf? Oh. Lacey. Lacey Strum. Oh, okay. Uh, hey Google, stop. Yeah. Okay, so what did you find out about Iris Exe? Oh, that's what I'm saying. She's not. Doesn't really seem to be much of anybody on her own she does she's kind of a well if you took fly leaf and lights and they had a baby it would be this lady because mm-hmm. i mean that was like that that was like de- so close to being prodigal daughter from lights there that i'm like she had could have a lawsuit on her hands like that was <laughs> literally like almost word for word uh and then the before that though it was like lacy from fly leaf like Right. And she sings with such a unique style that it's like, that's clearly what they were going for. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I do think that it felt to me like that song was recorded at a different time. Hmm. The the audio, the the sounds they were using sounded different. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that was made on a different laptop or something like that. So. But what a banger. Yes. And it still, it still had a bit of that. If. Bad Omens was Rugsop kind of deal where it's like this is just, you know, producers doing relatively simple or at least not particularly complex. I guess it's just one thing and then the opposite. But yeah, relatively simple electronic thing that, you know, loops a lot yes. within this vocals thing. It's very, it's, like, it's still within the realm of that for like sure. Like Nero, but, like yeah. a Nero type yeah. thing. But the thing that killed me with that was I, I thought that was really awesome. But then I was like, well, there's no way they could find a guitar part to work over this. And then they did. And then they did. But it wasn't really a guitar part. It was just like white noise guitar part going da 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 like st- stutter edited or, or around it in a rhythmic pattern. Still but sounded amazing. Sounded yep, amazing. But it worked. Worked and sounded amazing. It's so good. Love it so much. Um, let's... I'm curious about some of the, this other stuff. Do you want to... Do you, let's Let's go ahead and listen to the next intro thing so this is find peace and we'll go right into artificial suicide unzipped yes which is only a minute which, 52 so i'm guessing that it is just some sort of a weird thing both both of the unzipped tracks are listed as having bad omens and thousand below whoever that is don't know what that is so okay same i i do believe that the, these next songs so artificial suicide the gray death of peace of mind and Death of Peace of Mind, and then Bad Decisions, and Just Pretend, um, are all remixes. I think so, too. And one so. thing I find very interesting about the labeling on this for the Death of Peace of Mind is that they're patches. We are Fury patch and So Wily patch. And they are with We Are Fury and with So Wily. So it's like, here's two different versions of the same song. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be some really neat Peter Gabriel type stuff in terms of like getting different versions of the same thing uh yeah it'll be i'm I'm anxious to see what these unzipped ones are that's what i'm Mm -hmm. curious same okay so let's listen to find peace the 57 second intro and then we'll go into artificial suicide unzipped ready ready Mm -hmm. in three two one okay we're back to what the first beat death thing was with this sort of like stutter edited chopped up stuff Mm mm-hmm I was expecting that, but do you know, I saw the other day online that their song, Just Pretend, is their biggest song. I couldn't really? even think of which song that is off of Death of Peace of Mind. I can't, 
yeah, I can't pick that up. Like it wasn't one of the ones that stood out to me, but apparently it got really big on TikTok and it's their most like listened to song on Spotify. Cool. Yeah. So it's the one that like propelled them and I don't even remember which one it is. So I'm excited. This is reminding, I, this is reminding me of the game Control. Yeah. Which is an exquisitely fantastic game. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the primary reason that I can't wait to play Alan Wake 2. The DLC for it. For what? Alan Wake 2? Oh, yeah. Oh, that DLC. Oh, That actually, you can actually play it. Okay, here we go. Now, this might just be some baloney that we... we... <laughs> Boo. Definitely not acoustic. (laughs) This is the stupidest thing, and I love it. (laughs) Give me that whole chorus-y thing one more time. They're not going to, though. Maybe they They might. Yeah. That was a thing. That was a thing. thing. That was a thing. (laughs) That That was was a wild ass thing. (laughs) And so (laughs) unnecessary. You just don't know what's gonna. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) But it's like, what is gonna happen? Because it's like you've got the pitch, the pitch down vocal. So it's like maybe this is like a slow, kind of drugged up version. But then it's like we'll pitch the vocals down, and then we'll make it twice as fast. (laughs) We'll literally just speed this song up and add like a drum beat over the top of it. But it ruled. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I could listen to that a million times in a row. <laughs> and it still wouldn't equal the length of the first the first version. Uh, okay, I don't even know what to say. Let's just keep going. I'm having fun. Yeah. Okay, so this that is the great. gray, also unzipped. I'm curious yep. if this also is Also 1,000 below. Yeah, who knows? So, all right, so here we go. It'll... In three, yep. two, one. So, you, so this is the same, featuring the same person as the previous one? Yep. Okay. I think it's another fast version. For three minutes, let's let's go. Let's go. <laughs> the chipmunk version. This is like, this is the anime version of this song. (laughs) That is a great way to put it. (laughs) A great way to put it. Oh my God. Now that you've said that, that is the most accurate (laughs) thing I've ever heard. I can picture exactly what the anime is. There's clouds moving. It's a shot from below. It's a static shot of just a dude with hair blowing in the wind with the clouds in the background. He's like walking. No, it's just, just static. Himself. Just static. But the background's kind of moving. Oh my god! This part is like Vash the Stampede walking across the screen in front of a sunset. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, just silhouettes. <laughs> yes. 
And now this is the action part with all the guns and the flips and the zoom in and out. And here comes the happy girl that likes to cook and wear an apron for some reason. <laughs> you know? No shirt under she the apron. She also has a gun. <laughs> yeah, she also has a gun. Hey, did you ever watch... Um, uh, I was thinking about this one the other day. Because um, it's been so long since I watched any anime. Because all we have right now is Peacock. And there's no mm. anime on Peacock, which is a huge bummer. But... um. Did you ever watch Gunslinger Girl? No. Oh, it's a good one. You hear that? It's like this high, like... Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, there's like definitely some chip tuniness to this. Yeah, yeah. Gl glitchy glitch. I love this part. So so stupid. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it is really stupid. I, I part of it makes me mad, and the other part's like, damn it, this is awesome. <laughs> and that's Don't be the part mad. that wins Wash out. It away. And then this is just like How can this be heavier than Metallica? Right? But it is. <laughs> it is. Those kick transients have such a crunch to them. Like, it's almost, it's almost 8-bit. Like, yes. like, it's just they're, so they're hard definitely, and square. Yes, there definitely was some, like, chip toony stuff there. Mm -hmm. No, the furnace! Not the furnace, the air conditioning, the central air! <laughs> it's fine. It's loud. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'm not going to, I have to get up and shut that door, though. So, uh, I will do It is that. a little loud, but... <laughs> it also shows exact. It shows how gated uh, Streamlabs is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it won't be gated for me, but uh, it also is. It's. I think today the high was ninety two, something like that. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, and it's a dry heat too. We had in Omaha. They had like two, two to th three inch hail last night. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hold on one sec. Stop. Stop that. <laughs> okay. Death of Peace of Mind. We are Fury Patch. Are you ready to hear Bad it? Omens and We Are Fury. <laughs> See what the heck this is. Uh, are you ready? Yes. In three, two, one. Okay. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah, very cool. Mmm. Okay, build it up. I love that they kept the hums in there. That's so good. Yeah. It 
See, now we should have a rap verse coming in over this. This would be so cool, right? Boo! Length of song <laughs> is boo! Well, it is a little bit tricky because the most of that song, like the verses were a little bit too close to the original. I agree. And the chorus was so cool yeah. that it's like, which what do you want this to be? Because if you're going to stay stick that close to the original, I want a full length song. Yeah. And it just kind of was like, it couldn't decide which direction to go, and then it ended early. Yeah, and I don't even think, like, there aren't any other p- parts of the song. I, if I remember the original song correctly, like, then in the metal kicks in there, and then mm-hmm. uh, the uh, then they just go to the chorus one more time. So there is just, mm-hmm. like, a bridge, and then they go to the chorus one more time. So, so what, another 30 seconds tops? No, it could be, like, another minute, but, like, sure. you know... It's not necessarily necessary here. However, if they'd have kept that beat going, taking out the sort of like, I don't know, I was just thinking of it as like basketball <laughs> stuff in there, which doesn't sound like basketball, but I was just like, man, this sounds like something that the basketball team could warm up to uh, <laughs> when they're shooting their hoops at the beginning of the game, warming up. But, um, you know, keep that beat going and then just have a rapper come in and do a rap verse about death to be death to peace of mind and then go back into the ver- chorus. Like, you'd have a you could replace the metal bit with the rap bit and make this a complete like remix. Yeah, yes, yes, and it would be yeah. Okay, so let's just go right into the next one. This is the same song but a different remix. I see. and this yep. is so wily. Mhm. Okay. Are you ready? Mhm. 3 2 1. Oh yeah. I don't know how I feel about this speeding things up and it just not being for comedy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it not being for comedy is a great addition to that. I don't know. A lot of female vocalists slow their stuff down a lot these days, and I think it's always super rad. Yeah. You're just back because it crosses over into that type of vocal you don't like to hear anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music that's happening here. It's so simple. Yeah. I like this better than the previous one, I think. Oh, I definitely don't. But I like what's... It's definitely more different than the original, though. So I appreciate it more from a remix standpoint. Yeah, this is cool. Awesome. This is cool. That's good. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this is fantastic. Dude, Excellent. that shows you what electronic music can do. Yeah, Because that, that was like was unrecognizably the same song. The coolest thing. That was really cool. You know I what? love Go ahead. They just, the whole time there was so much space. Yes. And that which was. Which gave them yeah. all kinds of freedom to do all kinds of weird shit. And they did. And that's what it sounds yep. like. Um, I'm looking forward to this next song, I gotta say. Me too. Because Bad Decisions is one of my favorite songs off of the Death of Peace of Mind. It is mm-hmm. a long 
slow song. However, mm-hmm. it says lo-fi, which is not appealing to me. <laughs> I think I think lo-fi is more of a, a genre than what you can expect out of the production. Oh, I agree. And, and I just mm-hmm. but I just I think that we'll see. Maybe I could be wrong, but I when I see when I see lo-fi, I think it's going to intentionally sound bad. I don't think it will. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll yeah. see if we can figure out what the definition of that is. Yeah, care, my it's... guess is it's going to just be run through billions of filters to the point where it doesn't even sound like the same thing anymore. But we'll see. It'll be. I think it'll be better than that. It, it includes Dahlia, whoever that is. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Let's listen to that. In three, two, one. Okay, way already better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, that's what I kind of expected. So this is Dahlia singing, you think? Hmm. Good question. No. I think it is. Yeah, maybe. I'm going back and forth. Because it's not the original vocal track. No. Yes, it is her. It's got to be. No. Are we going to get a drum beat or not? Okay. I've decided that lo-fi is the acoustic version of an electronic song. That's interesting. Ooh. All I know, no. Lovely. You know what that song was? What? You know how we always make fun of in movie trailers nowadays? Like I knew it. Every, every trailer has like a song that's like a famous song, and then they get a female vocalist to come in and do like a slow version of it. 
Yeah, they play one piano note, bing, yeah. and then there's like super slow vocals. Yeah, they just did that yeah. to their own song, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is pretty contentious. But I mean, that was, but it was all, no way. <laughs> this, But this is like, this is quintessential lo-fi though. Like it has all of the elements of every lo-fi version of everything. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Especially when you're listening to like game soundtracks and stuff. Like you wander around YouTube, especially if you like leave it playing and forget about it. You'll wind up in like you know, Final Fantasy lo-fi territory or Zelda lo-fi. And this is exactly how they all sound. It is absolutely its own sort of like sub-genre. Mm-hmm. I don't think, and like I think it was great. Yeah, yeah. I, I did like that. I liked that a lot. I thought that that was done really well. I liked when the the more high fidelity things came in. Yeah. Because uh, I was like, okay, I almost feel like a better way to describe this would be minimalistic. So I don't know. I think I maybe just have a problem with calling it lo-fi. But it's so funny because I just saw an advertisement actually for a box that's called the Lo-Fi Box on Facebook earlier today. It's a it's a um, it's a like a piece of hardware that you plug into your like your keyboards, your guitar, or whatever into your and into your rig, and it has beats programmed into it and all these things. But basically, what it does is it, it lo-fi's any signal you put into it, oh. and and then it's got lots of knobs and it. It has a lot of knobs on it. Not it got. It's lot got of knobs. lots of knobs. Got lots of knobs. It has a lot of knobs <laughs> on it. That you can turn and adjust things. I assume just like filter sweeps and whatnot. And uh, I had never. I, I was listening to him do it, and I was like, "What do you? This is not lo-fi. I don't even know what this is." And so I was like, hmm. "Okay, I guess." Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and it's, yeah. it may be something that could that does need a little bit more of a universal definition, but yeah, it's kind of seems like it's kind of coming into its own space. I like that. I, I would have liked to have some more vocals in there, like more lush background the vocals layering. in there with, with, mm-hmm. of, of the guy. Probably would have been neat to have some lower stuff from him in there, but. Still, that was. I liked neat. that one section where it went super dry, mm-hmm. just for a little yes. bit, and then came back out. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. Nice yep. touch. One hundred percent. Um. All right. So now we're on to just pretend credits, which I love yes. that because this has been a soundtrack this whole time, and that was for... the trailer song that we just heard. Yes. And we've already we've got an electronic fight scene song. We've got all sorts of. It totally makes sense that they called that this as OST. You know, right? I love that. Yeah. So this is the credits version of their biggest song, Just Pretend. So let's mm-hmm. see what this is. And this is Bad Omens, Chief, and Let's Eat Grandma. <laughs> I hope one of those two artists is a rapper and we get a rap first. That's what I'm hoping. I hope Let's Eat Grandma is a rapper. I really want to buy a Let's Eat Grandma. I want, them for, I want that for you. Yeah. I want that to yeah, for yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yes. In three two one and this is four minutes 359 lights at you I mean it is what <laughs> lights Let's hear it. Let's I go. I don't recognize the song, though. Do you? The song? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Those 80s drum fills were a choice. This is so good. Oh. That synth bass, yeah. It's so synthy. Wavy. Mm. Toss out the old one. <laughs> that, synth, that synth wave bass is just bringing it for me, man. I love how slow and plodding it is. Mm hmm. Vocals could stand to come up a little. Yes. And I will say, it sounds like a credit song. It does, 100%. I was going to say that, too.
Mm. Wow. Great. Great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. I mean, that song is normally 325. So we got more than the original song. There. I mean, it felt pretty short. It, I'm sorry. It felt pretty uh, slow to me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, for, for sure, I, I think that, yeah, I, I think I, you could feel that. Uh, great, though. What a great interpretation great. of that song. Mm-hmm. How cool this whole project was. I was just... Last three quarters of this, I was like, man, what a joy. Yeah. This has just been such a wonderful thing to listen yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I would consider it for the top 12, really, but... Yeah, I would like to be able to, and if I end up a little bit short on entries, I probably will, but it is tough to consider it to a, a full album, to have it feel like one yeah and well we can on our own time listen to the live stuff mm-hmm. because i do mm-hmm. like all of the songs that are on there you know so i did see them live uh last year two years ago something oh, like that okay oh that's right because i told you it. i wish you would have bought me a copy of the cd because the sons of guns always sell out and you can't buy a copy of it oh yeah yeah i forgot i forgot about that um cool yeah so, i did buy you something yesterday but you'll have to wait and see what it is oh awesome I uh, yeah, I still got uh, still got your old boy record here. Yep. Um, I am pretty happy with that. I'm glad we reacted mm-hmm. to that. I think that that was really cool. I definitely think that was worth our time. Um, yes, I agree. And I think that, that I hope people listen to this and it gets them excited. Uh, I want them to incorporate elements of everything we've heard here basically into their next album. Like I bet they will. I, I really would love it if there was some synthwave stuff on there. I would love it. Not you know, it doesn't need to be a ton, but just throw a little bit of it in there. I, I would love it if there was, you know, I, I don't. I don't even know if necessarily we have to have guest vocals because I do think that there. I like their singer's voice a lot, yeah, and I same. think he's a fantastic singer. And I think that he he's very versatile. Like I really like his aggressive vo- vo- voice, which we did not hear on this at all. No. But I really like his aggressive voice and the way that they mixed it on that album is p- particularly is great. Um, mm-hmm. And so I'm very excited uh, to hear whatever they decide to put out next. But they are a perfect represent. This is what we said two years ago. This is they are a the perfect representation of where metal is right now. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. one of the genre, one of the facets of metal at least. You know, because there's right. a Not all lot metal. of different styles of metal, mm-hmm. but one of the most. Accessible. And Chris would say none of this is metal, but that's fine. Y- yes, exactly. He would say it's not metal, um, <laughs> and that's fine. That's I mean, it's not fine. It's wrong, but um, right. But yeah, for sure. And I'm 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 ha- I'm really happy with this. So and mm-hmm. it's I'm happy that Poppy keeps getting around. You know, she Same. keeps just doing all these different things and event. And you said she's got two new songs out. So are we going to get a Zag this year? You know, we didn't get Zag last year. 
We didn't. And if this is so, so different from what Zig was, we probably won't get Zag. But if we get, if you said that they're really heavy, I believe you. And if we get a whole another really heavy album from her, I think that would be awesome. I think it's probably more likely we would just get like an EP or something, um, rather than mm-hmm. a full album of just heavy. But we'll see. I don't even. Maybe. I haven't heard it yet, so I don't. I mean, know. it's two. She's got two songs, and they're both equally heavy in a way that makes me think that she could be putting out a whole album like yeah. this. And, so and, it'll be really and interesting. And the song that's on here featuring her could easily be mm-hmm. featured on that if she wanted to as well. It's in the same vein for sure. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll keep an eye on Bad Omens in the future. And, you know, it, one thing I would love for people to do in the comments, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you very much. But let us know if there are metal bands out there that you like that you feel are similar to this. Because I feel like since they got so popular a few years ago and with Sleep Token last year, there's going to be a huge wave of metal bands over the next five years that are being influenced by this type of thing. I'd love to see that be true. And I cannot wait to see what some bands come up with. And I even think things like Spirit Box are included in that box as well. Because Mm -hmm. Spirit Box also is not afraid to include certain things even though I feel like they have a more consistent sound, uh, they are also, I, I would, you know, they could go on tour with Bad Omens very easily and Boy, probably, probably be have too. been on tour. So uh, so that would totally fit. But also at the same time, like Julian K is going to be releasing a heavy album coming out soon, but they have committed to using no guitars on the album. So they're going to be making... Do they usually? Yes. Yes, they usually have guitars. Now, it's not necessarily tr- crunchy guitars, but they, they do uh, interesting... But they, they, they decided they wanted to make a few songs, and they were having so much fun with it. They're like, what if we could do an album? So they tried uh, a Kickstarter pledge music type thing to see if they could back, if people would be interested in it. And I backed it right away. And they, they, the response was so overwhelming. They're like, we're going to try this. And so they're going to try to make a whole heavy album with no, mm. with just using heavy synths. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Because I was thinking yes. there's only the one other band. Orgy. Those are the dudes who sort of created this electro- heavy oh, okay. electronic sound. Oh, so, sure. Um, so I'm very excited for that. There was I only know one other band, in my experience, that has always used guitar that made an album where they decided they were not going to. Mm-hmm. And it was Death Cab. Oh. And that album is trash. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've said that they have one album that you hate. Is That's interesting. I have tried so many times. Do you think that's to why to you don't like keys. it? I don't know. Or it's just one of Not reasons. really. It's just okay. not. It's just not doing any. It's. No, they were in a creative funk and they had to try to do something to get them out of it. But do you like their albums that came oh. out after that? Absolutely, yeah. There you, that's the there only one that, they, of theirs I don't like, they, and I appreciate it for whatever it did to get them yeah, I was to the say, next place. They needed to get that out of the way so they could go do something else. So, mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, and we will, keep, like I said, we'll keep our, our eyes out. Let us know in the comments for bands we should check out along this line. Uh, and we'll, we'll just keep going. Thank you very much, and we will see you all next time.